Hello, today we have with us Oren Hershkowitz, the CEO of Enlivex Therapeutics, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker ENLV. Oren, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Craig. Great being here again. Oren, tens of millions of Americans suffer from osteoarthritis with years of knee pain and debilitation, and in many cases, they end up with knee replacement surgery. Do you believe that Enlivex can change their lives and offer a therapy that actually works? Well, based on our recent phase 2A trial, I think we actually, I believe we can actually do that. Um, you know, we discussed the data with world leading experts in osteoarthritis, and they are also excited about the results we're seeing. You know, in, in age above 60, what we call age related idiopathic osteoarthritis, we're seeing significant responses, uh, clinical meaningful outcomes, and therefore we are very, very excited and hopefully we can get this to those patients out there, yes. All right, so how does it actually work? Well, it's, it's simple. We're talking about three injections of our drug Allocetra directly into the knee every two weeks, so overall one month and that's it. Okay, Oren, I wanna keep talking about this because it does seem so compelling. Give me more of the key highlights and tell me what makes these results so important. Right. So, you know, first of all, it's a phase two study, uh, just in, in, you know, explaining the design. We're talking about randomized control, double blind study, uh, patients receiving allocetra drug versus a placebo control group, right? Uh, moderate to severe neosteroidis patient. And we gave him uh, allocetra and then measured pain and function at three months. Now, the data um, in this age-related group was really substantial. We're talking about 50% pain reduction in, in the Allocetra group, 72% more effect than we saw in the placebo group, 109% improvement over placebo in function, right? So all of this are actually phase three endpoints, legitimate that F, the endpoints that FDA expects, and we're seeing already statistically significant results and clinical meaningful results in that population. That makes us, at this stage, very, very excited about the next steps. Thanks for that, Oren. I want to move to the primary osteoarthritis patients where the data showed particularly strong results, including statistically significant reductions in pain and improvements in function. Tell us about that subgroup, why it's so important, and what would this mean for phase three development? That's an excellent question. So it's really important for two reasons. First of all, we're talking about the you know, substantial population of osteoarthritis. Aviopathic primary osteoarthritis above the age of 60 represent more than 50% of the total market. It's actually also 50, more than 50% of the study population, right? Now, think about it. One of the main drivers for the market growth in osteoarthritis is the fact that we're aging. And this is an age, mostly age-related wear and tear disease with low-grade inflammation. So it's the driving force, one of the major driving force for the growth of this market. And this is the population that we are targeting. That's why it makes it so important and so significant uh, from, from a clinician perspective. And I think it needs to be underlined that osteoarthritis orin is a disease with very few effective treatment options beyond painkillers and surgery. Now, just how big of an unmet need are you addressing? And again, tell us, how does Allocetra potentially reshape the treatment landscape? Right. So yes, it's true. The, you know, the fact that it's such a... Uh common life debilitating condition, it actually defined a serious condition by the FDA, right? So we're talking about a huge market, estimated numbers of 32 million adults in the U.S. suffering from osteoarthritis, 14 million with knee osteoarthritis just in the U.S., right? And we don't have effective treatments. We just don't. We have painkillers. Nothing really showed substantial results as we're starting seeing now with allocetra, right? In this age group of, of 60 and above, which makes this really revolutionary from that perspective. Uh, the market is huge, uh, estimated to be 7 billion today to grow to about 15 billion in 2030. And, you know, and we're providing them with a life-changing, potentially life-changing therapy. 
You know, Oren, one of the things that has impressed me about Allocetra is how simple and cost-effective the whole process can be. You got an estimated cost of goods of about $450 for a full treatment cycle. Now, how would that give Enlivex a competitive edge versus other cell or biologic therapies? Well, that's a great question, Craig. Actually, you know, when people think about cell therapy, they think about very sophisticated and very expensive drugs. This is entirely not the case. Allocetra is an off-the-shelf cell therapy, a very, very effective manufacturing treatment, very simple, very simple. At the end of the day, uh, results in the fact that we are very competitive from pricing perspective. Our estimation is about $450 uh, average for treatment for osteoarthritis patients. So it's really nothing like, you know, other cell therapies out there. It's very competitive to what's currently being used in osteoarthritis, although it's not very effective. Turning now to the leaders of your great team, Oren, you have great experience, including a $590 million biotech exit and successful partnerships with big pharma names such as Pfizer. How is your experience shaping your strategy for Enlivex? Okay, so this is actually the second round of, of uh, co-founder and uh, Shai Novik and myself. We actually, in the previous company, we developed a long-acting growth hormone. The company was eventually acquired by a U.S. public company for a $590 million acquisition. And uh, we also did a co-development and licensing agreement with Pfizer over the, that leading asset. So I've worked with Pfizer for five years to do the late stage clinical development. We know what uh, Big Pharma are looking for. Uh, we did that deal actually following a successful phase two clinical data, which is exactly uh, the point we are now. So I think we, we uh, are very experienced in both the drug development side, but also from the, uh, the business side. And that's obviously an advantage. Final question, Oren, what is the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in Enlivex right now? Okay, so first of all, we're still, you know, a microcap company with meaningful clinical data, right? At a huge unmet medical condition, huge market. Season management, as we talked about, really novel modality, uh, cost of goods is low. So you had all of those components, which make this a very, very appealing, you know, option for investors. Oren, thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure again.